A lot happened this week, way more than anticipated, and it seems that this coming week is looking even better. With the state of play that will go live very quickly after this video post, I will have my predictions here. We got an update on EA's games and also some interesting stuff regarding the Concord situation. We got an update on that. So a ton to go over, even more than I'm talking about here. Of course, sit back. And let's go. So while we still don't have the official state of play announcement yet, it will very likely happen the day after this video drops because the stream will go live on September 24th, two days before Tokyo Game Show and also two days before the PlayStation 5 Pro pre-orders go live. And Sony, by the way, also revealed the 30th anniversary items that look insanely nice and pre-orders for those go live on the same day. So there's a PS5 Pro bundle that comes with the console with the colors inspired by the PlayStation 1 and I love the colored logo. It has the 30th anniversary mention also on the console and actually a collector's number because there will be only 12,300 available worldwide which a nod to the release date of the PlayStation 1. Okay, that's cool, I guess, but it does mean that it will be very hard to get one yourself with scalpers probably already preparing to buy these in droves. So the PS5 Pro bundle also comes with other 30th anniversary items inspired by the PlayStation 1 like a DualSense Edge and a regular DualSense, a charging station for the controllers and this very awesome USB-C cable inspired by the controller cables of the PS1. So while they are selling these controllers separately, I wish they would also sell these cables separately. I would totally get them. But no, they're only included in the PS5 Pro bundle and there's also a PlayStation 5 digital bundle with the regular PS5. No prices were shared yet, but I would not be surprised if the PS5 Pro bundle was like $1,500 and I'm not even kidding. I know, that's crazy. I already have a portal, but damn, that PS1 design looks amazing so this will also be sold separately again pre-orders also on September 26th via the PlayStation Direct store or if you don't have the Direct in your country it will be at other retailers good to know though is that these 30th anniversary items will release on November 21st so you will have the PS5 Pro two weeks later if you get that bundle. Now let's hope they show some cool PlayStation exclusives at the State of Play on September 24th that we can then play on all this new tech. Although the rumors this week don't really hint at something new, at least yet. Like we knew it was coming but now the ESRB rated the Horizon Zero Dawn remastered for PlayStation 5 and PC and this basically means that Sony submitted the game to the ratings board and that it will be released very soon. For comparison Horizon Forbidden West was rated and then launched 55 days later. They also got the Lego game of course planned for the end of the year with the leaked release date being November 14th. You could argue that releasing the Zero Dawn remaster and the Lego game game close to each other could hurt but on the other hand the lego game could also bring in new people on switch and pc who then might want to play the original zero dawn on ps5 so my bet is that we see this remaster in october already and yes zero dawn still looks good you can play it at 60 fps on ps5 still though if you compare it to forbidden west aloy model Aloy in Zero Dawn kind of looks outdated, also the load times on PS5 right now are pretty long, so that will likely be addressed. I'm sure they will add some quality of life features we saw in Forbidden West, like no pickup, which would be nice in Zero Dawn as well. I'm mostly curious though if they will update the very static conversations. And of course, it has to be a $10 upgrade if you already own the game, similar to The Lost of Us Part 2, or that we also saw for Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut. And I want this as well for Days Gone Remastered because yes, that has been leaked, it's coming. Like Days Gone released more recently than Zero Dawn, but I would still argue that a remaster for that game is a bit more exciting. Like it's great to have this game in the spotlight again and then people who missed the PS4 generation but do have a PS5 can now pick it up and don't have to worry about all the bugs and performance issues that we had at the launch of the PS4 version. The game also sits at a 91% very positive rating on Steam because people could just play a very, very updated version. So I do think people on PS5 will like this as well. And maybe if you miss those DLC challenges that they added for free post-launch, it will be fun to go back to those. But yeah, only for a $10 upgrade if you already own the game. And the problem is, of course, that Sony has to balance these remakes and remasters because we get Until Dawn very soon as well. 
it's getting crazy. We need to see new games from these big studios as well. Like showing the Horizon Online project next to the Zero Dawn sort of retellings with the Lego game and the remaster, I think would make things way more exciting. Or show what Sony Band, the studio behind Days Gone, is working on because we know they're not doing Days Gone 2, but a new IP, like show that next to the remaster. Let's look at some other news and then circle back to the state of play, my predictions and the Concord situation and more. So of course, if you liked the video so far, leave a like, that would really help me out, so thanks for that. And subscribe, because we post one of these big gaming news roundup videos every Sunday. EA held a business presentation this week, which might not sound that exciting, but we did get the confirmation here that Respawn is developing the final chapter of the Star Wars Jedi story. They also note that 40 million people have now played the first two games, so this also including those who played it through like a subscription like EA Play. Three years ago, that was 20 million who played Fallen Order, so I don't think Survivor is close to the number of copies sold that Fallen Order did, but it's likely still at 10 million, which is really great, and it it just came out on PS4 and Xbox One, which should add to that number. Well, let's hope that the third game will really be current gen exclusive to benefit from the PS5 and Xbox series. 2027, so four years after Survivor seems like a safe bet. Although I can see EA aiming internally for a holiday 2026 launch, because of course, holiday Star Wars, it makes sense. It will be made though without the director of both games, Stick. He formed a new studio to work on a new action adventure IP. So I'm curious what the impact on the quality of this third game will be. My hope is that Marin will be playable in this one. That feels like a logical step. Maybe even 50-50, I don't care. I, would, I think it would be very cool to play as her. I'm at least looking forward to this third game. Of course, let me know what you want to see in the final Jedi game in the comments down below. EA also announced some other things, like there won't be a Sims 5. Instead, they will keep supporting Sims 4 and have other spin-off titles as well. And even a movie is in the works. Skate is going into early access early 2025. And we learned a bit more about Battlefield that is being led now by Vince and Pella, who of course founded Respawn and before that worked on Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Like he has a very storied history. Like Apex Legends is the biggest thing that has happened to EA in the last few years. And that has been made by Respawn. So we now got a first official look at the next Battlefield. This is a map in Gibraltar. The game should be set between 2027 and 2030 and they want to go back to that Battlefield 3 and 4 feeling. 64 player maps, traditional classes are back and multiple studios are working on it. So DICE is leading the multiplayer, Criterion is helping with the vehicle handling as always, Motive who recently did the Dead Space remake and Star Wars Squadrons and the Battlefront 2 single player campaign is leading the single player for this new Battlefield and Ripple Effect is doing something new which is seemingly a free to play battle royale similar to Warzone. Tom Henderson got extra league details saying that there will be 45 weapons at launch double that of 2042, around the 10 multiplayer maps and overall to destruction with comparisons being made to Rainbow Six Siege. So EA confirmed that they entered full production earlier this year. They want to have a community event or something like that in 2025, but if the game will really launch next year remains to be seen. It sounds more like 2026 to me. They are saying the right things, like I think it would be good for the series to return and give Call of Duty some healthy competition. Of course your takes are more than welcome in the comments. So God of War Ragnarok on PC just came out and has a feature to reduce the frequency in which you hear puzzle hints from your companions. Yes, yeah, so too little too late for if you like me already finished the game, but it makes you hopeful that this will be a feature in future God of War titles and other PlayStation games like Horizon as well, where Aloy was like giving hints every time as well, which kinda ruined the fun. There will be an update to God of War Ragnarok with this feature coming to PS4 and PS5 later as well. Okay, now Concord. Maybe you've already seen that according to new rumors, the game cost $400 million to make. This is from Colin Moriarty who said he spoke to a developer working on Concord and talked about it on his podcast. Now since then, this number has been a topic of conversation with other knowledgeable like insiders talking to Concord people saying that it's simply not true. It does seem that it's more than the 100 million dollars though that was first reported and I will let you know when we have more info. But other things from Colin's video that I will leave a link to in the video description have now also been corroborated by other reporters and it's just interesting to look at this and how it's kind of worrying for the future of PlayStation. So 
for one, they really thought that Concord was the future of PlayStation. It was internally described as that. They also referred to it as a Star Wars-like project that they could revisit over and over again, maybe with new games, but also they of course had the secret level episode plans that will still air as part of the Amazon Prime show later this year. Like they had big ambitions for it, but of course, if we see it, then people internally must have seen it as well, that this was not going to work. But because of a toxic positive workplace seemingly, people were not allowed to say anything negative about it, like regarding the character designs or that something else was wrong. Mostly because seemingly it was Herman Hulst, his baby. Yes, Herman, who is now the co-CEO of PlayStation, basically the boss of all the games. This is not a great look, and it's actually kind of wild to go back to the press release where Sony announced that they bought Firewalk Studios. Firewalk's innovative approach to connected storytelling and its commitment to high quality gameplay continues to exceed our expectations. I think fans will be very pleased when they see what Firewalk has in store for them. Herman could not be more wrong and the innovative approach to connected storytelling, is he talking about the two minute cinematics that they would drop every week where we see the characters chilling on the ship? I don't see how that's connected with the gameplay where they suddenly go to a random map to shoot each other in the face. Like it's just really wild that they thought they had something here, while the game had the worst launch ever with 25,000 copies sold and it of course shut down two weeks later. I'm confident the studio's upcoming project will be a robust addition to PlayStation Studios portfolio and its live service and technology expertise will be instrumental in helping grow PlayStation's reach. This is what Jim Ryan said after they bought Firewalk, the studio behind Concord. And we of course know that Jim Ryan is not with PlayStation anymore. Curious if we see more ramifications of this enormous blunder because a ton of money went down the drain. So to round out this topic, we learned that the game director on Concord stepped down from the project, which was the right thing to do, but the developers are still unsure what's next for them. They hope that they will be maybe put on another project inside PlayStation Studios, but the more likely thing is of course that they will be laid off, the studio shut down, maybe they like shovel some talent around to other projects, that would be nice. I'm sure we will find out before the end of the month, but I don't think it looks good, and of course Concord will never come back, I don't see that happen. Like I think Sony overall wants to focus more on the future, and again they will do that with that state of play on Tuesday, September 24th, but to what extent, as the state of play usually only shows things for the coming months, which again likely includes LEGO Horizon, the Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, and Days Gone Remastered. And saying that side to side in one sentence is kinda sad. Like again, they need to pair it with something new. Show the Horizon Online game, Spider-Man DLC. Again, the Spider-Man DLC was leaked a couple of times, I can totally see that that will be announced. Would be cool to have that with a PS5 Pro patch in November. I think this would also be the time to announce the Dragon's Dogma 2 DLC. The game actually got an update this week, like they're still supporting it. So I think a DLC and then maybe a sort of complete edition in the holiday season for Dragon's Dogma 2 may Makes a lot of sense. Monster Hunter Wilds could show up here as well. Of course, two days later, it's Tokyo Game Show. I hope we see the release date for this game. I would love to see like a March date or something. Death Stranding 2 will also have a presentation at Tokyo Game Show, so a new trailer here would be cool. We saw the updated Hogwarts Legacy gameplay for PS5 Pro, so I think it's time to learn more about the director Scott and what new content we can expect. And Assassin's Creed Shadows, of course, has the PS5 Pro collab, so I think we will see that game show up during the state of play as well. Overall, this coming week, I expect quite a lot of SS Creed Shadow stuff. We'll keep you up to date in dedicated videos and the weekly Wednesday stream I do with YouTuber Fregnart. Tokyo Game Show will have many announcements with Xbox likely announcing many Final Fantasy games that will be coming to their platform and maybe we see more announcements during that show. Again the pre-orders for the PS5 Pro and 30th anniversary edition items will go live on Thursday September 26th. Greedfall 2 is out in early access, I will have a video about that up this coming week and we will have more videos with of course a gaming news roundup like this, recapping all the important stuff on Sunday. So subscribe to not miss it, a like would really help me out and check out our hands on impressions after playing Dragon Age because it's shaping up very nicely. You can watch it by clicking on the screen. I will speak to you very soon, goodbye.